Good afternoon, everyone. Today, I'm going to talk about differential gene expression analysis using R. This is the overall structure of today's presentation. First, I will briefly talk about the differential gene expression analysis. Then, I will show you how to use an R package HR to perform DGE analysis using an example. Then, I will talk about a web-based tool we recently developed for an uh, interactive RNA-seq analysis and interpretation using Shining. Finally, I will uh, talk about another R package we recently developed for the visualization and interpretation of DG analysis. Okay, first let's have a quick recap of what is gene expression. Uh, this figure is the central dogma. It shows how the genetic information flows from DNA to protein. And the gene ex expression happens when DNA is transcribed into protein, into RNA. And a gene expression profile is a snapshot of which genes are expressed in that cell at that time when the sample was taken. Then let's see what kind of information can be derived from gene expression data. Firstly, by observing chip data, one can infer which genes are highly expressed or not expressed, or in general the relative expression levels of all genes. Then, then by comparing gene expression levels under two conditions, one can infer which genes expression levels are affected. Furthermore, by observing expression levels of two genes collected at different time after a particular stimulus or different conditions, one can infer they have similar or different expression patterns. Usually, such co-expressed genes tend to be functional related, such as evolved in the same pathway or co-regulated by the same transcription of factors and so on. There are mainly two types of technologies that can measure the gene expression. One is microarray and the other one is RNA-seq. Microarray is a kind of well-developed technology and a whole branch of such datasets can be downloaded from the NCBI G Expression Omnibus database. And the RNA sequencing is so-called next-generation sequencing technology. After we get the sequenced short reads, people need design computational tools to analyze the high-throughput dataset. To get the gene expression data, there are mainly three steps. Read quality check. If your data pass the quality check, you are ready to do the following mapping and assembly procedures. If you have a reference genome, then you can use cufflinks to do RNA-seq assembly. But when you do not have a reference genome, uh, a de novo assembly needs to be performed. Now let's compare the two types of data, macro data and RNA-seq data. Comparing to Macquarie data RNA-seq has many advantages. Uh, for example, it has higher resolution and it can detect allelic expression and new genes. But only drawback of RNA-seq data is that it has the cost is very high. But this year, the sequencing uh, cost has been decreasing and most labs can afford the cost of RNA-seq data. So in this presentation, I will be focusing on the uh, analysis of RNA-seq data. Here is an example of the expression data for RNA-seq, which is also called the read counts data. So in this matrix, those rows represent different 
genes and columns represent samples. In this example, there are three tumor samples and three normal samples. When discussing statistical testing for differential gene expression, there are several things we need to take into account. The first and the most important item is that biological replicates are very important. You must have at least three replicates in each condition to have a valid statistical test. And since the gene expression level is affected by uh, factors such as sequencing depths in the gene lens, normalization of the gene expression data is also required in order to uh, make those uh, expression uh, read counts data comparable among different groups. And the a third uh, thing is that the distribution of read counts uh, need to be specified to in order to use specific statistical test. And the distribution of read counts is different from macro data. We will discuss it later. The last uh, thing is that multiple testing is also a big issue in gene expression analysis because we will perform thousands of hypothesis tests on thousands of genes. So there are a very high rate of false positive. In R6, the expression value is the total number of reads mapped to a gene or transcript. So it is also called count data or raw data, uh, raw counts or digital gene expression. There are several problems related to uh, read counts. Firstly, uh, read counts is related to sequencing depth. The higher the sequencing depth, the higher the counts. Also, the read counts is proportional to gene length. And thirdly, uh, the counts distributed uh, differently among samples. So uh, in each group, the count distribution need to be estimated in order to uh, compare the expression level among different groups. In order to account for those complexities related uh, to using simple read counts, normalization process is al always suggested. People use RPKM and uh, later use FPKM to do normalization. They are essentially the same. And they calculate reads per kilobase per million mapped reads. However, there are problems in using those normalization methods. Next, I will show you uh, the uh, uh, with an example. We have a sample uh, which whose length is uh, twenty kilobase trans trans transcript, and it has four hundred counts. The library size is twenty million reads, and the second. Uh, sample uh, has one, 10 counts for a 0.5 kilobase transcript. The library size is also 20 million reads. And for both of them, the RPKM equals to 1. However, uh, we could notice that for the first sample, the 400 counts could not uh, 
be generated just randomly. It must uh, have some information related to those uh, such many counts. And the RPKM uh, kind of masked uh, this important information. So RPKM and FPKM can be used for reporting expression values. However, for testing differential expression genes, uh, the raw read counts is always suggested. Better normalization methods have been developed recently. Uh, for both D6, 2, and HR, they calculate normalization factors and uh, D6, 2, apply normalization factor to read counts. And HR apply this normalization factor to library sizes. Uh, neither of them uh, perform uh, transformation of the data set, but use normalization factors within statistical testing. In this way, the most information will be kept uh, from the expression data. To determine the genes whose read count differences between two conditions are greater than expected by chance, DGE tools must take, make assumptions about the distribution read counts. The null hypothesis that the mean read counts of the samples of condition A are equal to the mean read counts of the samples of condition B is tested for each gene individually. While read counts of the same uh, library preparation or say technical replicates can indeed be well approximated by the Poisson distribution. It has been shown that biological replicates have greater variance than expected. This over dispersion phenomenon can be captured with the negative binomial distribution, which is a more general form of the Poisson distribution that allows the variance to exceed the mean. Different softwares use different statistical tests to, to identify those differential expressed genes. In HR, for two group comparisons, exact test for negative binomial distribution uh, is used. And for multiple group comparison, a uh, generalized linear model with likelihood ratio test is applied here. And for D seq, the two group comparison uh, uses an uh, empirical Bayes method to identify DG differential expressed genes, and multiple group comparison use generalized the linear model with valid test for significance. So when we have thousands of genes, there will be lots of hypothesis tests. So we must take into account the multiple testing issues. For example, you have uh, 20 hypotheses that you wish to test, and the significant level is 0 0.05. So the probability that uh, you will find at least one significant result uh, just by chance is equals to uh, 64 percent. So it will you will have 64 percent chance to find one significant result just uh, randomly. And as the number of hypothesis tests increases, uh, this probability that at least one significant result uh, will be due to chance will be close to 1. So when we test the thousands of genes, it is possible that some genes get good p-values just by chance. 
So to control this problem, problem of false positives, p-values need to be corrected for multiple testing. There are several methods to control the false positives. Bonferroni method is the most conservative approach to correct p-values. It is rejecting any hypothesis when the p-value is uh, less than the significant level divided by, by the number of hypothesis tests. I'll say um, The significant level is uh, the actual significant level is much smaller than the default one. Equivalently, it uh, means uh, in practice, people usually uh, multiply the p-value with the number of hypothesis tests to make the adjusted p-value larger. Uh, so that it's harder to re reject a hypothesis. A second uh, correction method is uh, false discovery rate. It is controlling the proportion of false positives among the set of rejected hypotheses. Uh, and in practice, uh, it rejects a hypothesis when the p-value is uh, less than the significant level divided by the number of uh, all hypothesis tests and uh, times the number of positive hypothesis tests. So the adjusted significant level is larger than the Bufferoni method. Uh, also equivalently, the adjusted p-value uh, would be smaller than the Bonferroni adjusted p-value. So it's less conservative than the Bonferroni method. And oftentimes you might notice that from the results uh, of software uh, like HR, uh, there is a so-called Q-value. It's, it is actually the FDR adjusted p values. Generally speaking, most differential expression Nazi software follow these four steps workflow to identify differentially expressed genes. First, those lowly expressed genes will be filtered out to have a better power of the analysis. And then uh, those gene expression levels will be normalized and uh, uh, the preliminary data exploration will be performed, such as PCA and uh, multiple dimension scaling. And then Differential expression analysis will be performed using statistical tests. And with those uh, identified differentially expressed genes, uh, a follow-up visualization and uh, interpretation re of results will be performed to show the results from differential expression analysis. Now let's compare the uh, most popular DGE tools. Uh, most of the DGE tools use uh, negative binomial distribution to model, model the read counts distribution. And DSEQ and the lemma worm tend to be more conservative than HR, but HR is recommended for experiments with fewer than 12 replicates. Also, Tools based on negative binomial distribution have improved sensitivity and uh, specificity, so uh, they have a good control of false positive rate. And if you want to know more about those tools, you can f 
just follow the links given here. In the second section, I will show you how to use HR to perform DGE analysis with an example. To install HR from a bell conductor, you can run those two lines in R. And please always remember to set working directory. Using getwd, you can check whether the current folder is the folder where your data is located. And then setwd can set up your desired working direct, uh, directory. Function library can load the package for use in the current session. Next, I will show you how to use HR with an example RNSeq of oral carcinomas versus matched normal tissues. Uh, this example is provided by HR. And this read.dali function can import uh, this uh, text file of read counts data. This function then can return the dimension of the data set, uh, which includes the number of rows and number of columns. This head function uh, can uh, let you look at the head of the data set, which includes the first the several rows of the data set. Before performing any DGE analysis, uh, we would create a DGE list object for HR to use. This DGE list object includes uh, three parts. The count matrix displays the number of counts for each sample. Uh, in the example, uh, the samples part lists the sample information, uh, which includes which group the sample belongs, and the library sizes, as well as the normalization factors. The genes part lists the information for each genes. Genes with very low counts across all libraries provide very little evidence for differential expression. In the, in the biological point of view, a gene must be expressed at some minimal level before it's likely to be translated into a protein or to be biologically important. So uh, the first four lines of R code retain only one transcript for each gene symbol and then uh, the following two lines will filter those lowly expressed genes. It just uh, keep genes with at least two counts per million in at least three samples. Then in HR, the normalization factors will be calculated using this uh, function. If you don't know how to use a function in R, always put a question mark in front of it and then uh, the help uh, information will give you a detailed uh, instruction on how to use this function. In HR, it provides some basic data exploration tools. The function plot MDS produces a plot in which distances between samples correspond to the leading biological uh, coefficient of variation between those samples. In this plot, you may find that dimension 1 separates the tumor from the normal samples, while dimension 2 corresponds to the patient number. This represents the paired nature of the samples. The tumor, tumor samples appear 
to be more heterogeneous than the normal samples. Next, a design matrix should be created for DG analysis. In this example, there are two factors, the patient factor and the tissue factor. So uh, each of the samples need to be specified regarding uh, which patient and uh, which tissue uh, it belongs to. When performing DG analysis using IDR, first we need to estimate the dispersion coefficient using this function, and then a uh, GLM fit function will fit a generalized linear model with the uh, DG list object Y as well as the design matrix. The following GLM LRT function uh, will perform the likelihood ratio test for tumor versus normal tissues. And finally, this top tag function will return the uh, top genes uh, from the DG analysis. And from this uh, screenshot of IDR, we can see that the results include uh, log for change, log count per million, likelihood ratio test statistic, p-values, and the FDR adjusted p-values. So far we have learned how to use IDR, but it is still uh, non-trivial for beginners to run those R code. So next I will introduce to you a web-based tool for interactive RNA-seq analysis and results interpretation uh, to named Iris. Iris is available at the following website. It is a web server for analyzing, visualizing, interpreting RNA-seq gene expression profiles. It is Compatible with most common DGE tools, which include HR, DSIG, Lima, Cufflinks, and Sleuth. It's it worth noticing that uh, those five tools covers 92% of the DGE analysis currently. I will show you how to use Iris using the screenshots from this website. In Iris, the example datasets are provided for users to explore the functions in Iris. The required input from users are count matrix and condition matrix. The users can also set up the filter cutoff to omit genes with lower than cutoff expression levels. The higher the filter cutoff, the less the genes will be kept in the following analysis. Also, the user can set the transformation method from this drop-down list. After uploading the dataset to Iris, the users can preview the input data from the right panel of the website. And the file summary, the count data listed the data uh, count matrix with rows representing genes and columns representing the sample IDs. And the sample metadata matrix, it listed the conditions for each sample as well as the uh, time that the sample was taken. Iris also provides several options for users to uh, check the data quality. This interactive box and the whisker plot or count transformation uh, show the distribution of the read counts per sample. And by pointing the uh, cursor to different uh, position of this plot, you can see the summary information of the distribution of read counts.
Eucharist, for example. Also, uh, it provides the histogram of counts by example to show, uh, to explore the distribution of the count. It also provides the total read counts by sample. Some preliminary analysis tools are also provided by ARIS. For example, principal component analysis can be performed here to initially identify the similar expressed profiles as well as potential outliers from the data set. The most important feature of ARIS is that it provides an interactive differential gene expression analysis tool. Users can choose from the two options, which includes DSEC2, HR, uh, and LIMA. In addition, the users can specify the factors they are interested in and define the reference level. Last but most important function of, the, uh, of this tool is that it allows users to uh, define the experimental design. After DGE analysis, this tool also allows users to visualize the DGE results interactively using MA plot or volcano plot. Users can specify the absolute log fold change cutoff value and the uh, cutoff for adjusted p-values. The DG results can be explored by users by moving the cursor around the figure. Also, the figures in the table from the DG analysis can be downloaded to a local drive by users. So far, I have introduced uh, some basic functions provided by Iris. Detailed information can be found on the Iris website. Finally, I want to show you an R package developed for the visualization and the interpretation of differential gene expression results from those popular DGE tools. Interpretation of differential gene expression results is very challenging because there are tens of thousands of rows and numerous columns uh, in the output from those DGE tools, which makes the interpretation of global trends difficult. Here I listed uh, those information included from DSEC2 IGR and the CAFDIF. We can see that from the output of those tools, there are log fold change information, uh, test statistics, p-values, and adjusted p-values. And here I uh, put an example output from IGR. In this table, there are gene IDs, log fold change, log counts per million, likelihood ratio test statistics, p-value, and adjusted p-value. This file will is output from IGR, and it will be considered as input to Vager for visualization. In Vager, we provide uh, publication quality figures for three of the most popular DGE tools, which includes CAFDIF, DSIG2, and IGR. The first one is box plus of log FPKM values for each condition. And uh, then it generates a scatter plot for log FPKM between two selected conditions. 
the scatter matrix function displays all pairwise scatter plot comparisons. It also displays pairwise correlations and FPKM densities for each condition. Then the DG matrix function displays shared differentially expressed genes for each pairwise comparison. The volcano function displays the log fold change with negative log p values for each pair comparison. And it also provides a volcano matrix function for all pairwise volcano plots. Finally, the four way plot shows the log fold change for two pairwise comparisons. The visual package can be installed using those R codes, and more information can be found on the GitHub website of Visual. If you have any questions with this presentation, please contact Command Core at Sanford Research. Thank you.